Good evening and welcome to episode 365 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Dongwa Kumalo. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the family. You've certainly been missing out on incredible po- uh, shows, rather, on property uh, across our social media pages. So do make sure that you go to our Facebook, YouTube, or of course, wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's Spotify or even Apple Podcasts to catch up on all the great episodes that you have already missed out on. And for all our regular viewers on our Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, welcome to it. You know how we do it. Every single weekday, you and I have an appointment at 7 p.m. where I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us make better property decisions. And it doesn't matter where you are in your property journey. This is the show that helps you on your property needs. And talking about your property needs, you, of course, know at home that you can also tune into a whole host of other shows that Private Property has across its social media pages every weekday at 8 p.m. Mbali Nwoko on the Farming Podcast. And she's on your screens every Tuesdays and Thursdays at that time, tackling agriculture and making sure that we get our fingers green. Uh, I think one of the big things I was saying this to my guest of air, we just had the first, you know, summer rains, proper summer rains. Uh, it's kind of been raining for the past two hours, my side of town. And we're a bit as we're a bit scared that we won't be able to go on properly because we know that you know Joburg uh, rainfall uh, it does pull a number on on our connectivity. But I must say I'm very excited about the first summer rains. Just earlier today, I was actually planting some spinach, uh, so I know that my garden is absolutely absolutely loving the summer rains. So I can't wait to see uh, as the spinach grows and the whole other uh, vegetables that I've already planted in. The garden. And of course, we're talking more of our shows that you can catch every weekday at 8 p.m. Every Mondays and Fridays, you can catch Chad on the Home Shoppers Show, where he takes you through incredible properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. So do make sure that you tune into that one. He gives us a good taste of what is possible, right? Uh, and sometimes it's just it's something to use in your mood board. I, mean, I know I go to you know the website very regularly uh, and take screenshots of homes different properties and some of them added onto my own mood board uh, for a property that I, I'm like, this is my dream home and this is exactly what I want it to look like. And on Wednesdays, you can catch Estee Classen on the home on the first time home buyers show, which is always in conversation with people who've not only walked that first time home buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. One of the great episodes that you can look forward to that Esty will be having is that conversation that she had with Proverb, uh, where of course they asked you at home, what property questions do you have? And he answered some of your property questions. So that's certainly something that you can look forward to at home. And of course, we are also uh, you know, expanding in terms of what you can look forward to uh, later on this month. You can look forward to the Real Estate Industry Summit. And this, of course, takes place every year. Uh, and, and because it is COVID, this event will be a virtual event. And it is brought to you by Private Property as well as um, in partnership with APSA. And it's going to be taking place later on this month, on the 29th of October. And it's a really is a great opportunity for you at home to be able to expand um, you know, on your real estate knowledge. And we talk about this all the time, that you really want to be able to find great nodes uh, of, of knowledge that you're able to tap into and hear from some of the experts um, that are going to be uh, speaking. So you can check out the website that is realestateindustrysummit.co.za to get a snapshot of what the program looks like to book your seat for this virtual event. And of course, looking forward to seeing you there it's, um, on the 29th. It's going to be taking place from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. That's certainly something that you can look forward to at home. And, and this is the last one. I know there's so much that we've got going on. And that, I think, is actually testimony to how we've grown and continue to grow from strength to strength. And it really is because of you at home. And because of just that, we want to make sure that every single time that you watch the show, you're able to also stand a chance of walking away with cash. Because we know we all love no cash, especially if you've got an interest in property. Uh, every rand counts and it doesn't matter how little 
version of this. We always talk about, you know, put in, even if you put in an extra 100 rands into your home loan facility, it certainly goes a long way. Well, with this competition, you stand a chance of walking away with 500 rands in cash every single evening. And all you have to do to stand a chance of walking away with the cash prize is to go to our Facebook page, comment on the pinned post where we ask you some of the great tips that you've picked up while watching the show. And of course, if your name gets called out during the show, then you stand a chance of walking away with that cash prize. The only catch is you have to be watching us live so that you can claim your prize down here below while the show is on. And if you do, the money is yours. If we don't have a winner, we roll it over into the money bag and of course continue the following day. So it's that simple. We're always winning, we're always improving and always wanting to make sure that more and more uh, you know, of us, and I say us because we really have become a family, uh, learn as much as we can about property and make the most informed property decisions. So I do want to find out from you at home, uh, you know, how you're keeping this evening. And, and of course, you know, who is in class watching uh, as we kickstart this evening show absolutely love and that's just because i've got a soft spot for architecture we're going to be looking at sustainable architecture if it's the first time that you're even hearing this concept we'll be looking at what exactly is it uh so almost a you know sustainable architecture 101 and really getting a good sense of what it is what is it not and and how how we can go about and, and what it looks like at different types of projects, whether it's residential or, of course, uh, you know, commercial uh, projects. And I'm joined this evening uh, by, the, by, the, by the young uh, Daniel van der Merwe, who is the founder at Leaf Architects. Daniel, good evening and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Hello, it's wonderful to be on your show again. Thank you for inviting me. It's only a pleasure, Daniel. You and I are chuckling as I call you young. Uh, Daniel and I were talking off air. Uh, you know, he was even joking that he he's, he, he got his hair all done uh, just for me for this show this evening. Many of you at home know him. So I also I was even saying to him, so he, he's gone and grown a beard uh, and a mustache. You know, is it a, is it a, a thing of the times? Is it COVID? I know many people are doing all sorts of things, but he is he's looking very young. You know, he's looking dashingly handsome and and very young. And thank you very much for cleaning up uh, for the show, Daniel. And I think to kick start is with, with our conversation and looking absolutely amazing is when we talk about sustainable architecture, what is that? What does that even mean, sustainable architecture? I think sustainable architecture, really, the primary goal is not only do we try and save the planet one step at a time, but in other words, it's about using the resources on the planet more effectively and more sparingly. But it also means money in your pocket. Um, so it's about, it's really about efficiency. So it's about smart building design and it is about using the available technology. Um, you know, the, the, the days of just using energy and using electricity indiscriminately are it's really over. As you know, ISCOM with all our blackouts and, um, and the price of electricity, as you know, has gone up by what, 385% over the past few years. So it's really a concern. It's not only about saving the planet, it's also about saving money. Mm. You know, Daniel, as, as you were talking through that and one of the big things you were saying is minding your pocket. Uh, part of me, you know, thought about how I know there's probably somebody at home thinking. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, when you talk about you know going green or anything that has to do with sustainability, people often think about the cost of that and thinking that if anything, that's just going to cost me more. Whereas, obviously, we're talking also about the the sort of long term uh, costs and not just the the costs sort of upfront and um, when you're building. When 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 we think about you know people who are um, worried about the costs. Uh, you know, what would you say to them? Because I know that one of the things, and we've spoken previously about even going green in our homes, um, whether you want to, for example, use solar and the, just the different ways you can be uh, more economical when it, when it comes to sort of energy usage. And I know that one of the big pressure points does tend to be the cost of, I'll say, making that change from what we are currently used to. And, and unfortunately, people don't also then factor in what we're currently spending and the potential 
potential than say um, uh, in that regard. So what would you say to people who are very cost conscious, especially those who are looking at, you know, your more residential projects that are not sort of high end residential uh, projects? Yes. Firstly, I think what is required is a mind change and a behavioral change. Um, if I can use the plastic bag uh, kind of concept to where, you know, in supermarkets, they started charging plastic bags and that didn't seem to help really. But when the moment that people started, supermarkets started issuing recyclable bags and, and bags that you can use more than once, I certainly made that change. I certainly, certainly don't use plastic bags anymore and I save money. Um, I don't um, throw things away. I recycle it. I reuse it. Uh, vegetable peels goes onto the compost heap. Um, so, yeah, it's a kind of, firstly, it's a mindset change. And secondly, then the moment that you can see if you implement small steps. For example, um, probably our most single expense is, is energy. So in, in a case where you've got an existing house, you can do simple steps. You can do things like just changing your light bulbs to LED light bulbs, which consumes 20% of the electricity of a normal traditional light bulb. You can do, you can reduce your, you really can reduce your water heating bill very effectively. I'll give you an example. I um, switched over to gas, gas geysers which means it's not an electric geyser that runs and keeps the water hot at a certain temperature over time. It heats the water instantaneously the moment that you need it. The moment you turn up a tap, that is when the gas kicks in and that's when you get hot water. And I can tell you that in my personal experience, I've saved 1,500 rand a month on my electricity bill. Now that, if you think that you can get a, a, a gas geyser for anything from six to 12,000 rand, you can really pay that geyser off very quickly. Um, so that's the first thing that you can do. This, the, the second thing that you can do. The third thing that you can do is really, if you're going to buy new appliances, if you're going to buy a new washing machine or a new fridge, look for the Echo label. Um, the new generation of appliances are far more energy efficient. They use less water. Um, and by the way, they're much quieter as well. So, so <laughs> next time that you go and buy a washing machine or, 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 a, or a, a dishwasher, look at an energy efficient um, um, uh, make. And then I also want to say that this, I'm talking about you know, behavioral changes. Really, the idea of popping in clothes into a, a tumble dryer, if you can hang it outside in a good old-fashioned sun, um, if you can do rinse a few cups, uh, hand, do some hand washing, do some um, uh, wash your dishes by hand, um, small things like that. Every cent counts, and every time that you do that, you are saving energy. I just want to put it in perspective. You know, we all have a collective responsibility towards the planet. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be our children's problem one day. And households contribute 25% of warm gas, green gas emissions. And in South Africa, households, and you can know, you know that with ESCOM sort of blackouts, households consume anything between 30, 35 to 38% of the total energy that ESCOM generates. That's an awful lot. So if each one of us just do our little bit and consume less energy, then we're making a big difference. That and secondly, we're a water scarce country. Mm. So, so, so it's about really, it's raining tonight. Get yourself a, a big Jose tank. Harvest that rainwater. You can use it for. You can use it uh, in your garden. You can you can use it for any other thing instead of using municipal water. And a third tip that I want to add is that I've made a simple connector of my grey water, my my bath, and my shower water goes directly into my garden. Mm -hmm. So you know, again, so why waste something when you can reuse it? And my, my motto is always reduce, reuse, and replenish. Mm -hmm. So I think one uh, adheres to those three, three things. And then the last uh, 
thing that I want to say, besides solar and besides gas, if you get cold, you put a jersey on. And when you get hot, you take the jersey off. So if you can just do simple devices like, for example, um, use a proper, um, if you can't afford double glazing, use, uh, you can use an e-efficient coating on your windows. A lot of heat enters and escapes through your windows. Look at shutters, even look at thick curtains. Anything that will and reduce heat gain and heat loss. Um, after windows, I must say that your roof, your ceiling, is where most of your heat escapes and where most of your heat is gained. So a simple insulation in your roof will make uh, a big difference. It really adds, again, to your energy usage and it makes your home more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got an existing house, obviously there's not much that you can do. But yes, a simple tree that can give shade, a deciduous tree that allows sun in and would provide shade in summer can make a big difference. Um, and lastly, I just want to add in terms of that is that what we've got to do is, is that we've got to look at simple things, at small steps. If you've got a leaking window, if you've got um, cracks under your floorboards, if you've got um, a gap in your door, add a simple sealant in because you'll be amazed how much air and how much heat enters and escapes through that. Simple little devices like that can make a big difference, not only to your energy consumption, but also to your monthly bills. Mm. I am this evening in conversation with Daniel van Amadova, who's the founder at Leaf Architects. We're looking at sustainable architecture and already seeing the love that we're getting on our social media pages, especially on Facebook. Um, Gane Radzilani watching, sending there those green hearts. LH France also sending those green hearts. Uh, and I see Bianca Combs saying, guys, it's my birthday. Uh, I do ask that you join me in wishing Bianca a very, very happy Happy birthday. Uh, I do hope that you've had yourself an incredible, incredible uh, day so far. And to make it extra special for you, Bianca, uh, can you sl slide into our DMs? I, I, I'm going to send you a, a, a copy of the um, of the property guide. I'm going to make sure that the team gets you that copy uh, to celebrate your special day. I think this is the first time that we're having somebody's birthday, or one of the first times, because we've had a few birthdays uh, in the past few months. Uh, but certainly, uh, Bianca, do slide into our DMs and I'll make sure that the team gets you a copy of that book. I want us to go for a quick break to find out who the lucky winner of that 500 rands in cash that is up for grabs this evening as we run, of course, our competition on our Facebook page. I hope that they're watching uh, so that they're able to claim the prize. Let's see who the lucky winner is. And that lucky winner this evening uh, of that 500 rands cash prize is Lebohan Kolodze. Uh, Lebohan Kolodze, I hope you're watching. Drop us a text down here below in order to claim your prize. Uh, and if Lebohan doesn't claim that prize, it is, of course, going to roll over into the money bag uh, tomorrow evening. But we still have some time to find out if Lebohan is indeed watching us and, of course, can claim that prize. As we continue our conversation with Daniel van der on sustainable architecture now daniel i think you you know you've done such a great job at pointing out some of the the behavioral changes that we can certainly you know make at home that obviously you know adds to the bigger conversation around uh, around sustainable living and making sure that we're very conscious of you know our energy usage and trying to of course watch our pockets because i think one of the really really big things is costs of everything are going up we saw the you know the hike uh you know the rate hike a few months ago we know that petrol prices going up so we really do want to you know find different 
different ways that we can save money, uh, regardless of where exactly uh, we are saving. And I've got a few comments here from our viewers at home who also share that particular sentiment on our Facebook um, you know, page. And we've got Wu Tembaleo to Makanda saying, wish I could save on levies and a special levy. And that's a huge one. And I think with that one, uh, I mean, on the levy front, that's that's one way. And I certainly, um, you know, say Tembaleo to watch some of the episodes we've done on levies because they're different ways to also get a sense of why your levy amount might be what it is. But where special levies are concerned, we know that we sometimes tend to find that special levies get raised when adequate planning wasn't done. Uh, and now they have to raise a special levy in order to pay for that particular thing. And, you know, one of the big things that we tend to raise special levies for, for instance, is even around the paint job, uh, whereas we're able to save up uh, for that particular job, uh, as opposed to sort of waiting uh, the last hour for it uh, and having to raise those special levies. Same my clients are saying electricity is so expensive. I'm considering solar geyser system installation in my property. Uh, Martha Shingang is saying doing laundry by hand is a bit extreme for me, but I'm all for saving the earth. I am big on that. Uh, Kana uh, Radzilani is saying that's a good thing to use water from the bathroom to your garden. It's actually saving water, fam. And that's a big thing. I think, you know, grey water and being able to really reuse your bath water for, for your garden is, is, is a game changer, especially when you know you've got um, a big garden. And even we have, you know, even when you have a, a small garden. Now, Daniel, I think one of the things then when we talk about sustainable architecture, um, and we look at, for instance, a residential project, you know, what does that then look like for somebody who is about to build? So, you know, we're not now talking to people at home where we want to make these different changes. Uh, but now when we're looking at, we've got a relatively blank canvas and uh, we want to obviously be as, as, as mindful of the environment as possible. What does that then look like uh, for, for those of us who are going to go into a building project? You know, to me, I have a whole idea of sustainable architecture, green architecture is almost a cliche. Um, it's something which everybody's bandied around. Good architecture, good design is sustainable design. Exactly, exactly. You know, and there's a lot that we can learn from our forefathers. There's a lot that we can learn from traditional technologies where they did simple things like just, it's called smart design. It's about orientation. How do you orientate your house, your main windows? Do they face north? Do you block off sun on the, south, on the, on the west side? Do you use the south side window opening sparingly? Little things like that. Do you use natural ventilation effectively to cool the house down in, in, in summer? Do you look at sun angles where you know that the sun is low in winter so it can enter into the space to warm your internal spaces? And by using your roof overhangs and patio spaces, veranda spaces effectively, you can block the same sun out in summer because the sun sits higher. So it's really little things like that. And then also I think what we need to do is, is to add is that you really need to look at the way that you use materials if, if efficiently. Um, the days of taking building rubble to a dump is over. You can reuse that same building rubble to make new concrete. You can use sustainable materials like bamboo. Bamboo is an amazing sustainable material. Instead of having forests chopped down in Brazil and the Amazon or some other beautiful uh, tropical island, use sustainable materials like bamboo. Recycle where possible. You can recycle building materials. Even better, if you're going to have an existing structure, don't demolish it. Upcycle it, readapt it, redesign it in a way that it works for you. It's far more cost effective sometimes to use an existing structure and adapt it to contemporary use or to your specific requirements than to go and buy a new property or to demolish it and start all over. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say. And then, secondly, also you need to look at the long term. So if you can implement um, certain principles already. For example, if you, in your, in your house design, if you allow for um, um, sleeves and so on, for a phased implementation of solar panels. We've done properties where people can afford, say, two panels, they buy two panels, 
They've got the inverter. But at least they can run their Wi-Fi. They can reach some, uh, reach some, uh, some lights. Then a year or two years later, they add another two panels. And some of our clients now are completely off the grid. They've got all the panels. So in other words, in terms of the design, make provision in terms of roof space, in terms of sleeves, that you can eventually go completely off the grid. Rainwater, I mentioned. Rainwater harvesting is a, and, and using it more effectively really is another way of saving um, resources. So I think it's about energy efficiency. It's about the structure. It's about design efficiency. It's about the thermal insulation of your house. Um, when we design properties in colder climates, uh, Eastern Free State and near the Sutu and those areas where it often snows and gets very cold, we actually allow for insulation not only in the roof but also in the walls and in the floor because that's where the cold comes in and that's where the heat um, um, or, you know, also can enter or escape. So the little uh, uh, things like that um, that can really assist you greatly to its um, ach achieving a more energy efficient and a more sustainable green um, environment. And by all means, invite plants into your home. I'm a, I'm a great gardener. Um, I've got plants all over me and all around me. And it's, a, it's amazing what plants can do in the home. They, they, they purify the air. They contribute oxygen. So incorporate landscaping into your budget and into your design in terms of the way that it interacts with your your social spaces indoors and outdoors is amazing concepts like living roofs and living walls where you can incorporate the architecture in fact what we're seeing is we're seeing a great emergence of landscape architecture and architecture where people start incorporating landscaping and planting and vegetable gardens and rooftop gardens uh, into the environments, into their homes, and onto their stands. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's actually, you know, Danielle, it's, it, it's so great that there are different variety of, of things that we're able to do at home. Um, and it isn't dependent on, you know, the type of property you have, so sort of the more high-end properties. But regardless of the, the nature of the property that you, you have, there really are different things that we're able to already start doing um, that could potentially be a cost saver. Because I think one of the things that many of us are feeling, I think all of us, I don't, I don't know a single person who isn't feeling it, is that the costs of, uh, you know, the general cost of living, of course, are going higher. Uh, with petrol prices going up, we know food is also, you know, going to go up. So when we re recognize that our homes are a standard cost uh, that isn't going to go anywhere, uh, our consumption is going to more often than not stay relatively the same. So in winter, we'll typically want to get some heat. Uh, and in summer, we obviously want it to, you know, to be cooler and we'll probably want our gardens to look a certain way. Trying to then find ways of uh, making sure we cut costs as much as possible and keep them low, because I think it's, it's one exercise to cut them, but also then be be able to do that from a, a, a from a long term perspective also becomes so key. I just want to add something else. I remember our grandmothers all had fruit trees and vegetable gardens. Um, you know, you went into your grandmother's garden, you picked fruit and you and they cooked spinach and they cooked beans from the garden. I personally have started incorporating edible plants in my garden. Instead of planting uh, beautiful roses, you know what? Carrots and spinach are beautiful. Plant them. You'll be amazed at how bountiful nature is. I, I cringe when I see people in winter, they sweep all the leaves and then they burn them. Don't burn your leaves. Make a compost heap. Put it back. Yeah. Replenish the earth. Replenish your garden. Eat from your, eat from your garden. Yeah. And I think so that's me, actually, you, you want to be able to eat from your backyard, regardless of how big or small. Uh, I mean, I, I do, as you were saying that, I'm like, absolutely agree. Uh, we've got a, a few peach trees. We had a, a grape tree that 
Uh, unfortunately, he was not in the greatest position. Uh, so we're going to have to move uh, that grape tree. And I think a peach tree is one of those things that we, many of us, you know, had in homes growing up. And so really trying to grow stuff you can eat uh, in your garden and, and not only sort of, you know, pretty things uh, that kind of lie there is so important. But Daniel, before I let you go, any final tips for our viewers at home when it comes to um, not just sustainable, architecture but really how they can make their homes um as eco-friendly and as sustainable as possible yes i want to say you, you might have heard of the concept the sick building syndrome mm -hmm. um it's called voc so it's volatile organic compounds now if you've got synthetic things in your house like those um polystyrene or um you know all these kind of different carpets that's not made or materials that's not made from natural products. It's actually going to make you sick. So not only is there a thing of that it's we're consuming petroleum-based products to manufacture all this synthetic stuff, um, uh, but it's also going to make you unhealthy in the long run. So get rid of slowly and slowly. If you're going to buy something, if you're buying a new carpet, if you're buying a new duvet, if you're putting new curtains in, if you're putting a new floor in, use uh, natural products as far as possible, um, uh, recyclable products as far as possible, use products that can be recycled, like I mentioned bamboo before, um, that's easily replenishable, and not only will it benefit your health, it will also benefit the planet. And that's certainly a great note to leave it on this evening. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Pleasure. And that's Daniel from the matter who was the founder at Leaf Architects, wrapping up the Tuesday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamandoma Kumalo. Unfortunately, Libo Hangolodze did not uh, claim the price down here below, so he does miss out on that. So we've got that 500 rands going into the money bag, and tomorrow evening we'll be giving away 1,000 rands. Remember, if you know that you've entered the competition, you've you know commented on the pinned post, make sure that you watch the show because we could be calling your name out loud and of course you stand a chance of walking away with that money well that's it from myself Uzamandu Wakumalo and the rest of the team uh, happy birthday again to Bianca I hope you've slid into our DM so we can get you your birthday present I'm off I'm going to be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7pm but do stay tuned for Umbali Nwago at 8pm we'll be bringing you the farming podcast until then hope you're staying home and staying safe